Only 45, 50 years ago, I would have been put in jail if I'd been caught. My path towards this uh, field of sexual anthropology actually happened through my work as a designer. And uh, I've been working as a designer for, I guess, a best, uh, the best of my adulthood now. I began with jewelry, and then I ended up in Milano and got my master's degree in industrial design um, when I was in my mid-twenties. And I continued to design jewelry for the fashion system until 2001. Um, but behind the scenes in reality, in 1992, I began the first collection of, of erotic jewelry. And I called it Sado Chic. And um, of course, at the time, there wasn't anything chic associated with the word Sado. Over the years to come, my uh, designs in silver for the body became extremely functional. Sometimes they're still worn as jewelry. Other times, they are explicitly used in the bedroom. So when I started to design this collection of erotic jewelry in 1992, um, my idea behind it was that the jewel in itself could actually provide a sensation. I um, ended up imbuing the, the world of fine jewelry with a function that went beyond that of status or um, you know, its face value. So many of the pieces in the collection, I'd say maybe 80%, uh, are actually bifunctional. They function as a piece of jewelry. For example, this, these rings, they are designed to actually be used as a ring. You can go out and, and do what you have to do, be gorgeous and glamorous. And uh, at the same time, they're also to be spun on the inside of the hand. And they can be used for massage body massage, head massage, feet massage, hand, and intimate massage. So my goal was to bring sensations to the bedroom that um, I couldn't bring otherwise. And of course, this sort of tool exists, everything, I think, ever since mankind exists. As my collection developed, it also began to englobe things that we actually can recognize more readily as objects. Um, that unfortunately still get pigeonholed and categorized as SM, for example, or BDMS, S SM, or in the eyes of some as potentially aggressive or violent. Um, and I'm speaking of things, for example, like a writing crop, and understandably so, because these are instruments that are made to control animals. What happens when we use them in an erotic context? I do think they have been used in an erotic context ever since they've existed, these objects. Um, but how to remove it from this category? That was one of my challenges. How to make it more accessible to, to those who actually have these fantasies or desires and at the same time remove the fear element. You know, the fear of being judged, the fear of doing something wrong, the fear of being criticized or kicked out of the house. And so part of my work is also bringing an aesthetic to, to our sexual exploration. I realized that if I was going to continue to do my work as a designer, um, especially for the erotic part, I would have to also become an educator. And I started to do salons uh, for groups. Uh, I started in London, and I began to bring people together. And that in itself was kind of revolutionary because I remember, and I still today, when I do, it's, still, it's rare that I do them, but I still do salons sometimes. And when it happens, I normally start out saying that I'm excited to be in an environment with a group of people who are like-minded because only 45, 50 years ago, I would have been put in jail if I'd been caught. And everybody that was involved would have been compromising their family's safety, their own safety. If we think about what happened in the 1950s, I mean, some of the sexual pioneers, Kinsey himself was was put into jail. He was brought to nervous breakdown. He was not allowed to speak his open views about the importance of our sexual well-being. I think that this is changing slightly. I think that uh, 
I think that my work over, over the past 20 years now that this has been going on, uh, things, have, things have morphed and I've worked hard alongside other people to spread information and, and I think that we're, we're, we are making headway. There's still a lot of work to do, but we're making headway. Hi, my name is Bethany Vernon. Subscribe to Thinker.